What I have now is I have two pieces of angle iron. Now these started off life as two pieces of 50 millimeter angle iron, so that's 50 mil both directions. And what I've done is I've trimmed um, them down and I'm now welding them together to create a bolt so you can basically see I'm welding it down in that corner and I'm welding it along on this corner and by doing that you can then create a rectangular bolt which will slide inside the uh, the rails of the gun so effectively by using angle iron you can create a bolt a rectangular bolt any size you want so I'm just getting on with uh, with doing some welding along the sides here and sealing it up. What I'm going to show you now is how the barrel has been attached to uh, the 50 cal. Now this is the underside of the feed tray. Remember the little details I was doing I welded this little uh, what would be spring uh, plate on so that's just welded across there then I've glued the whole feed tray I've welded the feed tray in at four points with some nice heavy welds to the case now what I've done here is I've welded a piece of piping down to the base of the feed tray now the bottom half of this piping I've had to grind heavily so that it's only about one millimeter thick um, and it's made of stainless steel pipe and uh, basically the barrel now slides into that and anchors and that's what keeps it nice and rigid the barrel doesn't wobble it's got some slight sideways movement left and right but it doesn't uh, you know rotor rotary movement left and right I should say but not particularly any sideways movement it's a nice tight fit and the bait the the barrel is attached with a homemade bayonet fitting I've made so you can see the effect of how this works uh, the barrel, which is just PVC, uh, not PVC, um, mild steel piping, is two laminates of mild steel piping. The outer is 25mm uh, and then it's got a 20mm one welded inside it to make it a little bit more rigid so that it doesn't bend if someone picks, picks the gun up by the barrel. You wouldn't want it to snap off here. Uh, basically, the the barrel has uh, pins welded through it so that nothing can be fired up the barrel um, it's purely for putting blanks in it so to remove the barrel it's basically push back twist and then it's a little stiff at the moment but of course like anything like this it will free off in time really it takes two hands to shift this <sighs> but you can see how I've done it if you look under there hopefully <sighs> yeah so you get the idea so there's a lug welded onto the side of the barrel and that passes through a hole here and the barrel will pull out the front I've then welded this pretty much like a large washer with a, a section filed out so that the lug passes through now on the barrel here to make sure it stays in I'm going to be fitting this spring uh, not exactly just like that but I could do Let's try and put this barrel back in again. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't want to at the moment. Uh, right, so basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be fitting this spring, but underneath the spring, 
um, to make it a neater job. I'm going to be mounting the spring on this piece of stainless steel piping. You see it just fits over it and basically the idea is I'm going to cut through the middle of this stainless steel pipe and I may weld the two, uh, the two ends of this spring to the pipe with, um, let's see, about uh, one and a half centimeter gap between the two pieces um, so that when it's pushed up, this piece here of the pipe will rotate round on this washer smoothly yeah and the gap will close up between the two pieces of, of the pipe I've got here um, and the spring will be pushing them apart now the back end of this may be welded up on here but I suspect I'm going to actually be leaving it loose and then further down the pipe I'm going to be welding another piece of piping over the outside of it which is approximately 34 millimeters diameter and I'm thinking that I'm not going to bother putting a taper in the barrel I'm just going to leave it as a straight barrel and then I'm going to put the extra metal around it approximately here to make it look thicker here and at the very barrel tip I'm going to weld an extra piece around as well uh, um, I think it'll all look pretty decent when it's all done it'll all be blued steel and uh, should look quite nice now this is galvanized steel um, now I think that's a perfect uh, solution for firing blanks through because it's not only galvanized on the outside it's also galvanized on the inside which will uh, protect it from corrosion because once you've got pins running through this barrel one at the end and one at the starting point uh, you know near near the uh, where the blank is fitted then you are not going to really be able to clean this barrel out it's going to just be like that for uh, the rest of its life. The most you can do really is, is uh, maybe flush some cleaning uh, uh, fluid through it, some uh, oils and stuff like that. Uh, maybe you might be able to get a pull through through it uh, of some form, but you probably end up getting it jammed. Uh, yeah, so that's basically what I'm working on at the moment. So I'll just uh, give you that little update on uh, on how that's working. Okay. Okay, uh, that's the barrel just about done. I've made the end up, um, bits of piping, large washer I've welded in, ground it back, filed it. I've done all these parts, bits of extra piping I've welded on here. I stuck this piece of pipe in the lathe and ground a little line for it there. Um, just so that if I do make the barrel carrying handle, it fits into that groove there and fits in front there so it swivels around the barrel, sort of yeah, the idea. Um, this. Um, that's part of the kit which was given to me, um, this piece here, but what I did was, um, yeah, I've had to grind it down to size, and I think this piece is uh, probably a bit of scaffold pipe, um, my mate gave me this rusty piece of pipe here, and um, I cut the end off. Uh, cleaned it up with an angle grinder and so on, might have put it in the lathe and given it a brush down or something um, but you can see I've laminated various pieces of piping all the way up until it gets to the right size um, here is the little spring unit which I've made uh, you can see how that operates it's, uh, it's, it's two pieces of steel pipe then I've wrapped flat bar around it I've welded them on 
and I've uh, slight, uh, just tack welded the spring in two points near its end so that it stays part of it. Now that basically moves around on on the bar here and um, I don't want to move this too, around too much. I've just blued this barrel. Don't want to sca scrape it up too much. And there's the little locking lug on the bayonet fitting which goes into the barrel there. Uh, um, you know, the barrel uh, uh, fixing. Um, what do we call it? Um, they call them um, quick release barrels, I think. Uh, CRB, something like that. CRB system. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I think it's looking okay. You can see there I've just gr uh, drilled some holes in the pipes and uh, welded, plug welded them to laminate the various pieces of pipe up to size. And uh, I've quickly done a bit of an oil blowing with the, my blowtorch down there and a big pot of oil there and a paintbrush because I can't submerge the whole barrel into the um, blowing oil blowing tank so what I do is I heat the barrel up and I brush the oil on and it's not a perfect finish but I think it's done pretty well um, it always um, seems to go down quite well when people view them at reenactments they always think they they look pretty realistic um, they've got a bit of they come with, end up with a bit of a, a look of wear to them, you know, so uh, a little bit of age. So I'm pretty happy. Okay, this is uh, how the bolt's starting to work out. Uh, as you know, it's two pieces of angle iron, one and a half inch uh, angle iron, which have been cut and then uh, welded up so it's weld down that corner and it's a weld down that corner all the way along the box so that I can make a bolt any size I want. Now here's the next little bit of work. This has started off life as a piece of one inch or 25 millimeter uh, round mild steel and what I've done is I've put it on the lathe and I've drilled a one centimeter or ten millimeter hole all the way through it. I've then taken an angle grinder to it and I've chopped it to that shape. And this is going to be welded on the bolt just about here. Now I haven't got my tripod with me as usual but um, what I'll show you is uh, the reason it's being welded up like so and uh, that is because I'm using a 9mm Sten gun blank, uh, magazine with 9mm blanks in it and uh, basically this has been shaped let's see if I can sit that there somehow this has been shaped so I've produced, or I'm producing, what I call the feed slots on a bolt. So basically you've got that has been cut so that the bolt will pass over the magazine and scoop rounds off and into the barrel. As I say, I'm using 9mm blanks with a 9mm blank barrel so that basically means it, it's incapable of firing live ammunition um, yeah so basically this is the bolt which is fitting in the 50 cal uh, brown machine gun and then it's having a side fed 9mm magazine which fits in behind where the 50 caliber, caliber uh, uh, drum 
um, sorry, box magazine would fit. So it's going to fit in pretty much approximately in that position there. And um, it should feed nine millis straight into the into the barrel. Now, because uh, the way a 50 cal is, the uh, the underneath of the 50 cal is very open, so the amount of mechanism required to uh, to eject and clear the cartridges out should be quite minimal. Uh, so I'm just going to get on with that. Uh, I'm probably going to mount this bolt in the gun, slap the magazine in from the side and align that. Then I'm going to tack weld it on the back here. Now the only other thing is um, obviously I've got to put some metal inside here to form the centre. Um, the part which scoops the rounds out the mag and I've got a fit firing pin in. Now the question is, is whether to do those points first or to fit them in after I've welded it on here. I think I can fit them in after I've welded it on. There's ways it can be done. Um, it could be the, the centerpiece could be welded into there somehow, or I could drill um, through it sideways, you know, down through the side of, of the bar here, and I could pin it or put some machine screws in. Uh, I'm tempted to say just pin it in some sort of way. I could use roll pins, for instance. So there's any number of ways I could do this. Um, probably use some sort of uh, thin high tensile bolts maybe. Um, I'm, I'll make a decision on it. But I've a, uh, at the moment what I'm thinking doing is I'm going to tack weld it at the back end there and see how it all comes together. At the end of the day if I only tack weld the back then I can always grind it off again and take this away and you know um, and change it if I have to so I'm going to get on with that okay the uh, bolt's starting to take form now so this is uh, basically a 9mm blank firing bolt which has been made up, as I say, it's two pieces of angle iron welded together, cut to size and welded so that the geometry fits into the rails which I've fitted inside the receiver. Um, in here I've got my barrel mounted. Uh, unfortunately the metal contracted a little bit when I was welding it and it's slightly deformed. Uh, if I ever made another one, hopefully I would get that a bit more correct. Uh, now in here, I basically got my nine millimeter blanks, which are sat into the uh, into the chamber. Uh, just the right headspace coming out on the round, so that if I wanted, I could fit an um, an extractor and yank the rounds out. Yeah. Now, uh, basically this bolt here, I know it looks a little tatty and everything, but it's welded all up. Okay, the feed slots here, which aren't completely slots yet, but there's a feed aperture on the side here. And basically what we have is nine millimeter rounds in a Sten gun magazine. And they will sit into the side like so. De -de -de -de. Yeah, so uh, obviously it'll be the opposite way. The bolt will run over the magazine, not the magazine through the bolt, but you get the idea. So the center of this bolt needs to be filled in next. It needs, um, it needs a piece of metal shaped, which will, feed, which will push the rounds out of the magazine and slide them into the chamber. 
So we'll just try the bolt in for size. <coughs> bolt slides in through the back here. And these guide slots. Yep, runs in there okay. And that should slide forwards. And all being well, should slide just over the head of the the, the blank. There we go. It's a little stiff at the moment, but uh, that just needs a little bit of work. That's all. Now, if you're looking through the side here, there's the uh, nine millimeter blank just sitting there as it should do. So that shows that I've got the alignment correct. Right. So if we then slide the mag in through the side, voila. There we go. So, uh, so that's looking all right, I would say. As I say, the bolt's a little stiff at the moment. But a uh, bit of greasing and a little bit of uh, running up and down in the, uh, in the channel, and that will be okay. So as I say, there you go. That slides forwards over the magazine. Obviously, the magazine needs a magazine well making to hold the mags at the side um, as well holding the mag exactly in the right position see there's a little bit of a adjustment in there but um, that will all be taken care of in the final uh, fittings but yeah that seems to be doing the job. Quite pleased with that. So, uh, it's just like making an airsoft gun in a way. Uh, when you make an airsoft gun, you put dummy rounds on it and you hide the airsoft BB mechanism in it as much as you can. So, here, Normally the gun would obviously be the other way up. Um, we can turn it over, I suppose. One second. There we go, flipped it over. So we'd have, we'll lift the lid on that. We'll have a, a box magazine sat down there with 50 caliber rounds and belt feed in onto here, onto the feed tray. And then hiding behind all of that will be the 9mm magazine. Obviously, as I say, that needs tweaking around. But yeah, the uh, they should feed in okay, and the cases should just drop at the base. Okay, so that's the mag, which will be full of the 9mm blanks. This is a little stiff at the moment. Pop that out. 
take the blank out the breech. There we go. Pop that uh, bolt out the back. Now, uh, this spring here, the plan is that I've drilled the hole in the front of the, the bolt here. Uh, it's now, the face is now welded over. And bolts fit, uh, sorry, the feed slots are fitted into the into the bolt here. And this rod here should go through that little hole in the front. Of course, a little bit easier if I use two hands. There we go. Right, so that rod fits through the springs in the rear of it here. So if I was to sit that at the side of the gun, approximately there, that rod runs through and the spring would be inside the case here. Now the problem I have now is uh, I bought this spring on eBay, cost me about £12. But straight away there's a problem with this spring. The gaps between the coils are less than the thickness of the coil. So in terms of spring performance and properties, it's pretty naff. Um, standard spring that you'd want to use for something like this should have about three times the gap um, to the coil thickness so it should be a ratio of about a three to one so that you can close the spring up to one third its total length when I close this spring it closes down to about two thirds of its total length so it only closes by one third so it's pretty poor so the problem I've got now is the spring is the right size to fit on this rod it's got a little slack in it but that's exactly what I wanted it's about uh, eight millimeters outside diameter and the rod I'm using is about three to four millimeters outside diameter uh, so it's just got about the right amount of play on there a few mil so uh, I've got a problem I really need to try and change the properties of the spring by lengthening it, pulling it out. Now, uh, I don't like messing with springs really because they tend to uh, just get ruined. Now you can, you can try doing it uh, a couple of ways. One way you could heat it up and the other way maybe do it cold. Now if you look at how springs are made, generally they are at least made uh, by people at home, they're cold wound round a former. So basically it's music wire or piano wire, whatever you want to call it, wire, spring wire, and um, it's clamped at one end and then it, it's, uh, it's basically spun and wound down a former. Um, so, if it's done cold, that means, in theory, that potentially, if I grab this, anchor it off at one end, and then pull it at the other end, um, while it's cold, I might be able to deform it enough so that it maintains its elasticity. Um, so basically yank it out to a good length so if i was to just maybe even clamp this in the vise and get a pair of pliers and pull this out cold it may take um the new form and then when it compresses again hopefully it, it won't compress back to how it is and stay like that um 
there will be a certain amount of adjustment. I basically want to pull it out so that the gap between the, the coils is three times the thickness of the coil. Now, I think the wire used in this, the music wire on this, is 1.25 millimeters thickness, which is uh, which is a fair um, gauge of spring, really. I'm I'm guesstimating really that this is going to do its job, but it just does not uh, close up sufficiently enough. I really need to adjust it. So the other way I could do it is I could put it, if I pull that rod out, I could clamp this rod in the vise and I could get a blowtorch and warm the spring up and spin it round with my finger here with a glove on or pair of pliers, spin it round and try and get a continuous temperature over the whole spring then I could just quickly while it's warm get a pair of pliers on each end and try and expand it out the problem with doing it over a spring of this sort of length is that some, some parts of the spring are going to be colder than other parts so when I come to stretch it it's not going to be evenly spaced some parts will stretch more than other parts of it because they'll be hotter so that's the problem so i'm tempted at least to try doing this cold first of all because doing it cold and applying pressure at one end or from both ends effectively should give an even pull over the whole thing because it's all one temperature so that's the way I'm going to try doing it and hope that that does the does the job okay so what I have here is a bag full of um, well music wire now you can get it in all sorts of gauges you can buy it on eBay and uh, this one is 18 gauge by 4 meters long or at least it was 4 meters long before I started making springs with it um, exactly what that is in metric uh, not sure um, it's probably a little bit over one millimeter uh, uh, diameter. Now I could form my own spring for this by bending that round a former four meters of wire there. That would be more than enough for doing it. So if this spring doesn't work out, I can make my own. Now. Basically what I've got, what I've done here is I've now mounted this in the vise and I'm going to see if I can draw this spring out just with a pair of pliers on it and keep its shape. Now this might be a, catast uh, a catastrophic failure. Uh, as I say, I don't really like messing around, around with um, springs, trying to get them. This is probably just going to fly out the vise and, and hit my fingers. So I should probably be wearing a pair of gloves. But uh, let's just see what happens. Right, what I should do is, first of all, take a measurement uh, if I could all oh, right there we go take measure so it's starting off at 17 and a half inches so let's see what happens when I start to pull on this glove on 
wires. Looks to me like it's not altered at all yet. So I'm gonna have to put quite a bit of pull on this thing to change it. Yeah, it's still gone back to 17 and a half. So if this doesn't work, it might end up being the, uh, the heating up method. Jumped out the pliers. It's quite a tough spring, this. It's not changed yet. That looks like it's altered a bit. Let's try. Try again. So I want to get about a three millimeter gap at least between these coils. Three millimeter. Right. I would say it's altering. but not sufficiently. That's just over 18 inches in length now. So it is changing. We need to go further. Approaching 19. Nineteen inches. Right, this rod I'm forming it on or adjusting it off is approximately one meter in length so I'm approaching pulling this out to one meter in, uh, in length down this rod <sighs> now that point there the weakest point in the spring it looks like it's uh, it's deformed more than the others so there's, there's obviously a slight weakness in the tempering around that area and it's given more than the rest right so that's just over that's 20 and a half inches now so I know I can close that up hopefully and I'm hoping it won't go back down to its original see just pushing that in again has now put that back to 19 inches so the spring is not very happy I've pulled it out to over I have had it out to over 20 but pushing it back in and closing it has deformed it back and it's lost an inch so uh, 
it's not as good as, as I was hoping it would be. I'm tempted to think I'm probably going to have to go with plan B which is heating the spring up which isn't a way that I want it to go. Um, I can't predict what it's going to do. So the spring is deformed again there in that centre. So it's lost its temper at that point there. You see, if I heat this up as it is now and pull it out in the vise to approximately there, heating it up is going to, some parts are going to warm up faster than the others and they're going to deform and the coils will kind of change their consistency. Um, it's just not uh, a, a job I like trying to play around with, trying to do. Yeah, not sure the answer to this. I think what I'll do is I will try plan B. I'm going to loosen this off, hold the rod in the vise, and then warm the spring while spinning it, and then try drawing it out. Let's get the stuff. Well, here goes nothing, as they say. does Not really hot enough. 
part of it's changed this back end here but this front section hasn't let's try again
certainly changed quite a bit. Uh, so it's 21 inches length uh, in length now. But I would think I need to be getting this to about 25 inches long compared to the original um, 17 inches. It needs to grow quite a bit. Anyway, I'm going to carry on playing with that and I'll see how it goes.